Hi and welcome to another episode and what we've got here is Super Retro Arcade by Retrobit. I have done an unboxing on this before so have a click up here and I'll also put it in the description below. Now with that unboxing I did mention it's possible to actually add more games to this system but for those who don't remember let's have a quick look. See you come with these games here and there's um, it says on the box over 90 games which is 95 games um, but it's still 95 games I know you can't see the very bottom right hand corner right now well, there we go it's hidden away but don't worry about that really it's just the 95th game um, but what you can do as I say is add more games and all you need is an SD card now this happens to be the 16 gigabyte one um, it's that three in a little bucket sort of shape and a ten in a circle for those experts out there I know you know what they are I'm trying to describe it for people who don't know so much about things um, but I bought this sort of one not because this particular system will read it stupidly fast it just makes it easy to write to it um, when you're copying a fair few things across now 8 gigabyte ones are probably fine as well um, but you do need to be formatting it to FAT32 and at 16 gigabytes Windows will let you to do that straight away without using any fancy applications. If you do want to use bigger ones, I recommend that you don't, because basically the Retro K can't really handle an awful lot of games at once. Getting to them will be a bore. So get 8 gigabyte ones, 16 gigabyte ones. Um, it's cheap enough, but at the same time, still by a name you know, um, like Sandisk, Kingston. Um, you know, some of the other ones as well, but you know, none of these really dirt cheap things that you've never heard of. Um, just don't bother with those. Right, so we can put the SD card in because I have already copied some games across. Don't worry, I will show you what you have to do to get going. Um, but what it will do when you first put the SD card in, it will ask you do you want to use local storage, which is the built in stuff, or do you want to use the SD card? Now, That'll be the same if you leave the SD card in there and then return the system on, you know, reboot it. Um, that It'll ask you this every time you boot up. But let's be honest, it's just once every time you have a gaming session with it, really. Um, once you've actually got the SD card for the way that you want it to be. Uh, it is possible to have more than just arcade games, um, but I haven't played around with that myself at the moment. From what I understand, it's a bit more in-depth, and I'm trying to keep this video a little bit on the quickest side let's put it that way right so SD card you can highlight it by pressing right so it's highlighted in blue and then press A and then slowly but surely depending on how many games you've actually copied across it will bring it up so just a little bit of pause here and there we go now you're going but wait a minute it starts at J not A that's because I haven't sorted the SD card out fully yet because I want to show you those steps as well so let's press down so we can zoom on past and get all the way down to Z. Dum de dum de dum. Down to Z we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. See what I mean? If you had an awful lot of games on. Now let's not be silly here. I have got an awful lot of games on here. But if you had like, I don't know, 9,000, 10,000 games on here. It would take far too long, so just don't bother doing it all on one SD card. Right, so we found Z, so we've got Zakui. Um, and then the next game is 3D count, uh, 3D day count, 3 count bout. And we have 3 in 1 semi, it says there, which is New Hyper Man. And then we have 3 Wonders, 4D Warriors, 005, 19XX. Now, for those that already have this, you'll know that you've got like some of the 19 something games, like 1942 and stuff. But as you can see, we've got all of them here. At least I think that that's all of them. And then we go on and on and on and on until we come all the way back round again to uh, I. Of course it is. That's the letter before the letter J. All the way back round to I. I had a bit of a brain freeze then. Right. So, what I want to be able to do is show you what you have to do to get these particular games across. I'm not going to tell you where to get them from, I'm just explaining to you how to get them set up if you're going to be doing it bit by bit by yourself. And just as a quick explanation before we get going, basically what it is, is that the arcade files are in a zip file, and then the little um, 
logo, avatar, icon, what do you want to call it? Thumbnail maybe. Um, is actually a PNG file. So as you can get your head wrapped around that as we jump across to the computer. But I'll turn this off for now. So let's slow down a little bit on this one because this is the bit of where you've got to learn something. So first things first, I've put my SD card into my uh, card reader on my PC. It's already been formatted to FAT32. Um, you know, so I'm sure you know how to format an SD card by now if you're using them. The first thing that we need to do on the very root of the SD card is create a folder called retro bit space games. You know, the actual space, not <laughs> typing out the word space. So just as the way it is there, um, and that is the major folder you're going to be looking after um, on your SD card. And then we can go into this, and then you can see I have a silly amount of things here. I've actually got 2,884 different things here. Now, this is the bit where you're going to have to go find your games yourself. I'm not ever going to explain on where to get them. But what you do is once you have got them, it will probably come named something like this. But then you need a PNG file, a graphics file, um, to match up with it. Now, for those eagle-eyed ones among you already, you will notice that the PNG file is named exactly the same as the zip file. So we have the 3COUNTB. So we need to have the PNG file named C, 3 C O U N T B, but then we need the word game directly after, no spaces, no underscores, no full stops, no funny and stuff, straight after it. Don't ask me why it is like this, but it is. And you stick in game, and then that's your PNG file. So, just for example, that's what the PNG file looks like. And you can find them already like this on the internet, or you can go off and download and you know get your Photoshop skills out and cut and paste them just to get you some understanding of what sizes you need if you are going to do your own. Let's bring this up. Uh, we need 400 by 163 pixels um, and with a bit depth of 32, seems to work, um, but that's it. There's nothing else really to worry about you know, with that. So get your Photoshop skills going if you want to do them all by yourself, but um, Otherwise, have a good look around the internet and see what you can find. Um, don't be coming to me for asking, as I say, because I really will not tell you. And that's that on that. Um, so that's how you copy the games across. So you take them from whichever other folder you've been storing them all in, stick them in this retro bit space games folder, and then you put them all in there. Now you'll notice, obviously, Windows is clever and knows how to put things in the alphanumeric order. So we've got the three, and we end all the way down at our Zs, or Zs if you speak a slightly different version of English. Now, that's all good and fine there, but of course, when we looked at it before on the console, it was all messed up. It started at J first. Now, to fix that, you need a program called dry sort, which is an arteries layer, and I'll put the URL for that directly in the description, so don't worry. And then from there, go get the latest version, which for ages and ages and ages now seems to be version uh, 1.242, and you stick that on Windows. I'm not too sure how to do this on the Mac, if anyone still has a, an idea how to do it. I've forgotten for now, if I ever find out a way to do it, um, I'll add to the description of doing this, but if you know how to do this yourself on the Mac, please leave in the description, in not the description, <laughs> in the comments um, for myself and other people to learn how to do it. So you get that loaded up. So let's go get that program actually loaded up, as I say. So let me just go to where I need to get everything. Here we go, here's the program. Let me minimize this down. We can leave this open, it doesn't really matter, but um, for now, let's close that as well. Just let's remember it's drive O. In my case, you'll probably have a different uh, drive, but just remember where that is. 
and then we go across to we need to actually get to a certain disk so as I say drive O for me and then we've got there and then what we need to do is make sure this icon here save current folder we need to make sure we do the drop down and it does subfolders as well and then um, which was the other one okay this sort current folder we also need to make sure that's done for subdirectories and then we click it because we've got drive up click done so it is now sorted in the correct order and then we save it and do a little bit of flashing around on your, your SD card won't take too long at all really and then that's it job done so we close that down and we go back to the console and here we are back at the Super Retrocade we'll stick the SD card in the back turn it on wait around for the thing to actually boot I just want to be able to show you what it looks like when it first starts it does seem to take a little bit longer than it would do if it wasn't for um, having the SD card in with an awful lot of games on it um, because obviously there's a fair few of them there now um, so I'll wait for it to boot up stay with me there we go and as you can see everything is in the correct order now we're starting at 005 the game um, compared to what it was before which started with a J because everything's perfectly sorted the way that it needs to be able to be sorted because of the app that we just used in Windows um, you can tell this because at the top left there there's no there was no actual like little arrow pointing upwards um, but there is if we move further on down so we can go all the way down to our Z's again um, or Z if you speak a different form of English um, and there we go so we have all these games now far more than the 90 that it mentions on the box so yeah have fun with playing around with all of these I cannot um, confirm that if they all work or not obviously I haven't played all of these games there's far too many but um, these are a fair few arcade games to keep you going it may well be that some of them play but are a little bit on the slow side because the Super Retro Arcade isn't super fast um, there is other systems out there that might be able to emulate a little bit faster but at least you get a fair few to play around with and now you've got your uh, thumbnails just right but let's play around with um, New Zealand story, the New Zealand story it was a good 8-bit game, 16-bit game back in the day lots of people don't even realise that it was actually an arcade machine at first but as always with these things we have to press um, select and then go down to uh, video so that we can change it to original size because basically this is where Retrobit has dropped the ball and set everything to full screen um, instead of original size uh, by default and not give you a chance to make everything by default start up by original size um, I've no idea if they've changed that in the European boxes if they have please let me know because let's be honest no one really uses a uh, component anymore with a system that's got access to having HDMI um, you know you, you're going to be doing it to stuff but it should have been a, a setting to be able to do them all like that so here we can go we can stick in a few credits um, and have a bit of a game so as always happy gaming <laughs>